In this video, I wanted to explain box 16.2 in your textbook, which actually contains several tables, and in particular, I wanted to talk about tables 1 and 2. Table 1 treats exponential exhaustion indices, and that's the main term that I wanted to explain. An exponential exhaustion index supposes that the amount of the commodity used each year increases exponentially. So if you have time versus qu uh, quantity used, maybe I should say quantity used up, that means, or, or just quantity mined, the amount you use in each year, this is an exponentially increasing function. So that's one of the the assumptions of the exponential exhaustion index. That's what gives it its first word, exponential. And then the idea of exhaustion is you suppose that the amount of the resource in the ground is proved reserves. Now, proved reserves is a very small part of the McKelvey box. Just the upper the upper left part of the upper left part of the McKelvey box is proved reserves. So this is a very conservative idea of how much resource you have. And the exponential exhaustion index answers the following question. If you assume that the stock of the resource is proved reserves, and you assume that the future quantity extracted every year is going to rise exponentially, then when are we going to run out? And the answer, in years, how many years more do we have left, is the exponential exhaustion index. So on the left, let's look at table 1 and interpret, let's say, this number. This is the exponential exhaustion index for aluminum. These are 1972 exponential exhaustion indexes. And so the prediction is that given the proved reserves of aluminum in 1972, <coughs> if you assume that the amount of aluminum mined every year is going to increase exponentially, then aluminum is going to run out 31 years after 1972. And the rest of the S column here and here are exactly those calculations for the other minerals on this list. All right, here, note that 1972 plus 48 years is 2020. 2020 is when I'm making this video. And so if the number in the S column is less than 48, what that means is that the exponential exhaustion index predicted that the resource would be exhausted before the year 2020. And you see that there certainly are numbers uh, that are less than 48. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Uh, actually, quite a few of these are less than 48. So those predictions uh, have not come true. But the textbook authors have included um, another set of columns, 5 times s. This means, suppose that the amount of resource isn't the proved reserves, but it's 5 times the proved reserves, 5 times the 1972 proved reserves. So this says that exploration is going to discover 5 times more of the resource. And then you recalculate the exponential exhaustion index with that assumption. So here, the prediction is that resources are going to last a lot longer. There are actually still some numbers that are less than 48. Not very many, though. But there are others that are pretty close to 48. So the exponential exhaustion indexes 
uh, for those uh, certainly didn't certainly weren't correct. Um, natural gas, for example, is kind of interesting here is uh, 49. Uh, we have uh, vast quantities of natural gas now that we know about because of that that's economical to extract because of fracking. Uh, so some of the numbers are fairly large. The, n the largest number here is, uh, or one of the largest numbers, not the largest, is coal for 150 years. But of course, we're probably not going to mine all that coal because it causes uh, greenhouse gas emissions. The idea of exponential exhaustion index was used by the book I call, uh, I, I let you, I, I, I mentioned in the previous video called Limits to Growth, which was written in 1972. So this reference here, Meadows et al. 1972, that is the Limits to Growth book. So that explains Table 1. Table 2 is entitled Revised Estimates of Global Reserves. And the revision is the following. It compares 1972 LTG, so LTG is limits to growth. So in the, in the limits to growth book, this was the estimates of global reserves. With the estimates just eight years later in 1980 of the U.S. Bureau of Mines. Now the U.S. Bureau of Mines doesn't exist anymore. It was eliminated by the Reagan administration. But it was an agency of the federal government that lasted about 100 years and collected a lot of data on mining in the U.S. So, so Table 2, this table on the, on the lower left, is a comparison of how global reserves of selected metals and minerals changed in the eight years between 1972 and 1980. And what you see is that three out of these four went up. Copper went up from 308 to 505. These are 10 to the 6 tons. That's a huge increase in copper and of course some copper was being mined between 1972 and 1980. But what happened is there is a lot of exploration and discovery of copper deposits and perhaps also the price of copper went up which meant that some deposits which used to be uneconomical to mine became economical to mine. And so in combination, reserves actually went up. They also went up for lead, you had uh, 91 going to 127, for zinc 123 going to 162. Uh, nickel went down, but nickel didn't go down very much. So the lesson which your textbook authors are using this table to point out is that reserves of natural resources, exhaustible natural resources, sometimes go up rather than down because of exploration. And essentially, Table 2 explains eight years of why the predictions in Table 1 did not come true. Uh, now, some of them may come true, but at least some of them already have not come true.